in the previous session we have discussed about uh, first we have opened the browser then we have opened the url called kareninformatics.com slash learn.html slash learn.html first i have identified the checkbox based on this bing link first i have to uh, i have identified the checkbox based on the bing link first identify dependent and independent element second identify the xpath for independent element identify the xpath for independent element text function is equal to bing bing double forward slash a text function then third point that is the second point third point is double forward uh, sorry slash dot dot is it the common parent no again put slash dot dot is this a common parent no yes sorry it's yes because it is highlighting both dependent and independent element from the common parent from the common parent i have to move to the target element from the common parent i have to move to the target element slash td of 3 under td of 3 i need to go to the slash input slash input this is all about how to identify the xpath for dynamic elements yeah Yeah. Mm. See when I put see under this TR I have to come to this TD. Am I correct? Yes. If I put slash TD, it is showing four matching nodes. Am I correct? Out of four, it is highlighting the first one. Am I correct? Out of four, it is highlighting the first one. That is that is why it is showing one of four. Okay. Now when I mouse over on the first one, is it highlighting your target element there on the top? Is it so? Is first one is highlighting your target element? Is it highlighting or not? I am asking. No, no. The one who have asked the doubt with me, I am asking her. Is it highlighting my target element? No. When I hit enter 2, it is showing 2 of 4. Is it highlighting my target element? When I hit enter, it is uh, showing 3 of 4. Is it highlighting my target element? Yes. yes, so that I have to put 3. So that it will show 1 of 1. Okay. Slash input. If any others has some such a doubts, you can ask me. Okay. Guys, I have sent you all the videos of the classes also. Just before some time only I have sent it. From today onwards, as soon as I finish the class, I will send you the videos. Don't worry about that. See, uh, that, wait, wait for another 10 more minutes. You will see that solution for that. Don't worry. Okay. I said, don't use absolute expert, sir. You only said that day before yesterday, don't use the absolute expert. But still you are using that. That's your question, right? Yeah, I understand that. I'll tell you, I'll give you the solution for that after some time. Don't worry. Okay, next. Next. I need to go to this website called demo.actitime.com. I need to go to the website called demo.actitime.com. <coughs> Under this demo.actitime.com, I need to enter admin, manager, click on login. After clicking on login, I need to click on tasks. I need to click on tasks. After clicking on tasks, I need to identify the checkbox based on Android calibration. I need to identify the checkbox based on Android calibration. Based on Android calibration. How to identify the checkbox based on this Android calibration. That's my goal. 
that is what I have to do. Identify the checkbox based on this Android calibration. Identify dependent and independent elements. Identify dependent and uh, which is the dependent element here? Checkbox. Checkbox. Which is the independent element? Android calibration. Second point. Identify the export for independent element. Right click on the independent element. Right click on the independent element. Click on inspect. Now identify the export for this under yeah double forward slash do wait 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 guys make sure when you're answering don't have any background noise please double forward slash do open brace text function equal to android calibration and see it should show one matching node if not then use some attributes and make it as one matching node anyhow this is the export this is the second point third point identify the immediate common parent how to do that single forward slash dot dot yes good malikarjun next is it the common parent no then Dot. Is this a common parent? No. no. Again, what I have to do? Is this a common parent? No. no. Again. Is this a common parent? No. no. Then. Is this a common parent? Yes. 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 This is a common parent. From the common parent. Now, from the common parent, I have to identify this checkbox. Now I am here. I need to move to this TD. How to move to the TD? TD. But it shows nine matching nodes. Out of nine matching nodes, it is highlighting the first one. Is what first one is highlighting my target element? Yes. 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 Of course, I have to go with the first one. Good, Malikarjun. Under this TD F1, I need to go to this div. How to go to the div? Div. Under this div, again I need to go to this div. How to go to the div? Div. Single forward slash div. That's it. This is the export for them. This is the export for that. Now, I have a, this is the export. You can take down this into your notes. Next, we will see the next one. And I will give you two minutes of time, just recap it completely. Because this is quite an important topic. use attributes. Text, plus attributes text plus attributes you can use whatever the way you want you can use it okay I need to go to, I need to open this flipkart.com. I need to open this flipkart.com. Login into flipkart.com. Add some items to the cart. Add some items to the cart. And go to this cart page. And go to this cart page. In this cart page, there are many items. I need to identify the remove link of this. Gorilla original edge to edge tampered glass. I need to identify the export for this. Then how to do that? That is what we are going to see now. Now, 
to identify the remove link of this gorilla original head stage first point what is the first point identify dependent and independent element which is the dependent element remove link which is the independent element gorilla original head to edge second point identify the x path for gorilla yeah independent yeah right click inspect yes i have got it now double forward slash double forward slash a open process text function text is too length lengthy don't use text function use contains text and write some text in there then put slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash yes dot dot Okay. Now I have moved to the common parent. This is a common parent. Four times I have to do it. Now from this div, do I want to come to this div? No. I want to come to this div. This second div. How to come to this second div? Forward slash div of two. Under this div of two, again I have to come to this first div and second div. How to come to the second div? Div of two. Under this div of two. Again, I need to go to the first div and second div. How to go to the second div slash div of two? Yes, that's it. Done. This is all about the X path for that particular element. Take down this. Yes. Now, <coughs> tomorrow, them uh, if they move this remove link from here, and if they place it in this corner, in that case, will this X path will identify? If they change the position from here, and if they put it here, in that case, will this X path will identify? In this position, we came to the second view, second view, and second view. In that case, from second view, they will move it to the first view. Case if you use this X path, that won't work, right? Because I am using absolute X path. I said you about double forward slash yesterday. I think day before yesterday. What is the purpose of double forward slash? What? No, I didn't give that primarily, secondary, and all. I have given you one good definition for that. Can you see the notes and tell me? Parent tag to child tag. Then what is the purpose of single forward slash? Uh, then double for double forward slash used in the who is that who is shouting? Double forward slash used in the begin. Don't sell here. If you want to sell something, you can sell it somewhere. Okay. See, double forward slash used in the beginning of the expression. Followed by the HTML tag, search as that particular HTML tag in the entire HTML page. Now see here, Control A, double forward slash div. How many div tags are there in this page? 
double forward slash div. How many div tags are there in the entire HTML? 15. 15. How many are there? 155. 155 div tags are there. Now, what I am doing here, because if you use double forward slash div, it searches in the entire HTML page. It searches in the entire HTML page. Double forward slash div. Double forward slash div. It identifies the div tag. See, now what I am going to do here is double forward slash div. How many matching nodes are there? 17 matching nodes are there. 17 matching nodes are there. Now, what I did here, I am identifying all the div tags in this entire, in this particular area, in this particular area, in this particular area, in this particular area, I am identifying all the div tags. In this particular area, I am identifying all the div tags. Double forward slash div. Okay. Double forward slash div. Identifies all the div tags. Div tags. Out of all these div tags, I want only the div tag which has text equal to remove. In that case, what I can give? I can give text is equal to remove. That's it. Text equal to remove. text equal to remove. Now, instead of using this absolute xpath here, I have used relative xpath. Instead of using absolute xpath, I have used relative xpath of that particular target element. Now, strike off the fourth point completely. Fourth point is completely invalid now. Fourth point is completely invalid. Fourth point is completely invalid. Okay, strike off that and take down this complete. This one. Sorry, someone is asking some doubts? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can yeah. You one more time? Okay. See, have you understood the double forward slash div? Yes, sir. It searches in the entire HTML page, right? Yes. What I am doing, I came up to this particular area. Out of the entire HTML page, I have drilled down up to this particular area. In this particular area, I am searching all the div tags. How many div tags are there? 17. 17. But I don't want all the 17. I want only the div tag which has text equal to remove. In that case, I am using open brace and close brace and I am filtering only text equal to remove. Understood? Okay. Instead of using absolute xpath, I have used relative xpath. That's why I said you to strike off the fourth point in the xpath for dynamic elements. Below the take down heading as not heading take down some text as instead use relative xpath instead instead use relative xpath instead use relative xpath yeah yeah yes 
no it won't search in the if you use in the beginning only it will search if you use in between it searches in its parent from that parent only yeah the parent is nothing but here okay this is the parent in this it will search all the div tag which has text equal to remove but if you use the same thing in the beginning right three matching nodes three remove tags are there understood see if you use in the beginning the parent tag itself is html tag it searches in this html this is the parent in this entire html tag it will search from the html i have drilled down and you have reached to this particular uh, point in this particular point you are searching all the div tags understood yes sir no malikarjun yes yes yes, yes. Yeah. the same way yeah same way yeah exactly ideally the same way same way yes 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 and yeah. some yes yes now instead of this what i can write instead of this what i can write can you tell me what is the relative export instead of this instead of this what is the relative export for the check box this one double forward slash double forward slash div okay open at the rate very good very good class equal to img not image img that's not image right yes if i put that that's enough instead of that i am using relate to x path here this is the final x path for dynamic elements whatever you have learned yesterday you should not use that you have to strike off the fourth point this is the final x path for dynamic elements completed next the same way i can use that for this also i can use that for this also instead of this what i can write instead of this what i can write okay input yeah check box that's it copy this paste that's it take next this is the x path this is all about the x path for dynamic elements first we have learned about absolute x path relative x path x path for dynamic elements x path for dynamic elements now 
okay use any kind of export whatever absolute or relative or export for dynamic elements i want to identify this last checkbox how will you identify this last checkbox can you tell me this last checkbox i need to identify right click, you right -click inspect <laughs> this is the source code yeah control f done what is the export for this Uh, okay, today LinkedIn will be there. Tomorrow something will be there. But always I want to identify the last one. Export for dynamic elements won't work out. Am I correct? Yeah. In that case, always I need to identify. Because you will have a manual test case telling that identify the last checkbox in a web table. Hmm. No other option? Double forward slash input type equal to checkbox. Make it as an object. Uh, make it as an object and take it. Yeah, that's why if you practice, you will be telling this correctly. You guys are not practicing. You have to be more in practice. Now, totally 8 are there. That's why I am giving 8. But today, I have 8th one. 8. Tomorrow, if there are 10, 12 RLs, if it is 4, 5, in that case, will this export will identify the last one always? No, it won't identify the last one. Identify the last one in that case. Now, in that case, <coughs> how to identify the last one always? Take down, take down heading as how to identify, how to identify last element in a web table, last element in a web table. How to identify last element in a web table? There are two different ways. First way, take down first heading by using last function. By using last function, L A S T, last function, open brace and close brace. By using last function. See, if you hard code the value as 8, then that makes a problem. Instead of 8, I am going to give last open brace and close brace. So that whatever, out of all the objects, it will take the last object. Out of all the checkboxes, it will take last checkbox. If you want last minus 1, then I can last before 1, I can put last minus 1, minus 2, like that, whichever I want. This is how to implement the last function. It's very easy. Take down this. We'll see the next one. Make it quick. I want to identify last element, but if I use this last, then that makes a problem. Then that makes a problem. In that case, what to do? Last, uh, last will, uh, okay, sorry, last will exactly work. If I use last, then it will work. Or else what I can do, second, take down second heading by using count function, by using count function, by using count function, 
by using count function. Count is not directly implementing like this. Count function is implementing in a different way. How to implement that count function? See here. How many objects are there here? How many objects are there here totally? How many objects are there? Eight objects are there here. Okay. I am going to use count. Now I am counting how many objects are there. I have made it as an object and I have used count function. Now the value of this is 8 because there are 8 checkboxes. The value of this is 8 because there are 8 checkboxes. Out of all these 8 checkboxes, I am counting how many. If the number of checkboxes decreases to 4, then what will be the value of this? Four. If the uh, number of checkboxes increases to 10, then what will be the value of that? 10. This will, what I have copied and pasted that in the notepad. Whatever it is there in the notepad, it will give you the maximum count always. Maximum count always. See, earlier what you have did in the initial stage, you have used, make it as an object and you have used 8 because it is a maximum. If it is 10, you have to put it as 10. If it is 4, then you have to put it as 4. Always you are passing the maximum value here. Instead of hard coding the value, why can't I copy paste the value which is here in the notepad? Can I do that? Yes. Copy this and paste it here. Paste it. So that now the value of this is 8. If the number of checkboxes increases to 10, then the value of this selected area is also 10. If it decreases to 4, then the value of that is also 4. Likewise, I am putting function inside a function, nested function or count function. Nested function or count function. That is what I have did here. Take down this. Yes, last. There is no difference. You go and go with last function itself. Okay. It's an alternate. What I'm telling. Okay. That's it. No. First, why you need first? Give one always. One is always first. That's why there is no inbuilt function called first. Okay. I'm telling you the reason also why it is not there. If you give one, it will be always first. checkbox. If I want to identify all the checkboxes in this page, what is the export to identify all the checkboxes in this page? What is the export to identify all the checkboxes? Double forward slash input. See, until now we have saw how to identify only one element. Now we are going to see how to identify multiple elements. How to identify multiple elements okay now double forward slash input open brace at the rate type equal to checkbox next I need to identify all the text boxes in this page text boxes in this page now how to identify all the text boxes in this page krninformatics.com slash sample dot html right click inspect yeah what is the export to double forward slash input open brace at the rate type equal to text checkbox for text boxes also you will use checkbox text ok see because you will may be having a manual test case telling that identify all the text boxes and in all the text box type prata 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 like that 
in that case you should be able to identify all the text boxes now how will you identify all the radio buttons in this page don't take down listen I will give you time to take down how will you identify all the radio buttons in this page if you want the source code for any one of the radio button I have yeah double forward slash input open brace at the rate type equal to radio so that I am able to identify the radio buttons radio buttons it identifying two radio buttons in this page Fourth. identify all the radio buttons next how to identify all the links in this page double forward slash a double forward slash if I want to identify all the links in this page right click inspect click on the tag name press control double forward slash a then open brace at the right class if I give it will identify only that element which has that class attribute but I want all the classes what I can do in that case text of Google if I give it will identify only that element which has that Google text but I want all the links in the page already I have said you the answer and no need to give anything that's it how will you identify all the images in this page double forward slash IMG how will you identify all the select drop downs in this page double forward slash select yeah. right click inspect double forward slash select it will identify all the select drop downs take down this it Next. Now we have identified absolute XPath, relative XPath, XPath for dynamic elements, how to identify last element in a web table, how to identify multiple elements. These things we have covered in up to up to now. Next we are going to see, with XPath itself we are able to identify any element. We have totally eight element locators. Out of that we will be using XPath widely. But there is a topic called CSS selector. Even that topic also I have to cover. Take down hitting a CSS selector. Then you might be asking a question. Sir, with XPath itself, we are able to identify any element. Then why CSS? Just it's optional. It's there. If you want, you can use it or else leave it. By using XPath, uh, CSS selector, you cannot identify all the elements. Only few elements you can identify. What is the... How to write the CSS selectors? Let us see the example for that. Selector. Syntax html tag open brace attribute equal to value
HTML tag open brace at attribute equal to value. There is people say a cascading style sheet, but that doesn't applicable for here. Just a name. That's it. Okay. Now I want to identify the CSS selector for this username text box. How to identify the CSS selector for this username text box? Right click inspect. Then tell me. Input. Open brace type equal to text. If I give it will identify all the text boxes, but I don't want all the text boxes. I can give ID equal to U name in that case. I can give ID equal to U name. Copy this, paste it. Done. Take the double forward slash input open brace id equal to u name now here there is no absolute CSS, relate to CSS, going back to parent, coming back to child, text function, nothing is there making object, nothing is possible. Only by using attribute. If you have unique attribute, then you can identify the CSS selector of that element. Or else you cannot go with the XPath. That's why I am telling you to give preference for XPath itself. With, by using CSS selector, you cannot identify all the elements. Only few elements you can identify. You cannot identify all the elements that's why it is not encouraged to use css selector now i want to identify this checkbox what is the export to identify this checkbox right click inspect click on the tag name press ctrl f yeah tell me input open brace id equal to rem rem that's it Copy this, paste it, done. ID equal to REM, that's it. It's an alternate, that's it. There is no specific. I, in my eight years of experience, I have never used this. Okay. It's there, we have to learn. If you go for interviews, they will ask you. At that time, you should not be blank, right? That's why I'm teaching you. <laughs> there is no other purpose. See, I'll teach you in such a way that whatever the way they ask, you have to crack it. See, in interviews, they will literally in some interviews, if you are going face to face, right, they will give you a laptop and they will tell you to write expats. Because this itself is half of your selenium. If you are able to identify the elements, performing action is it's common for everything, yeah, all the elements, whatever. Even though if you are going to learn for more than a month in performing the action, base is this. Until unless you identify the elements properly, you cannot perform the actions. That's why. Now, I want to identify this Google uh, Google link. How to identify this Google link? Sorry, I want to identify this radio button. How to identify the radio button? Right click, inspect, yeah. Input, ID equal to female. That's it. This is the CSS selector for that. Copy this and paste it. That's it.
Yeah. No, we can identify that also. Next, let me see this. L let us see that also. Wait. I want to identify this single select drop down. How? Can you tell me what is the CS selector for this? Input. Uh, for this also, you will give input only. Select ID equal to CT. That's it. This is the CS selector for that. Done. Take down this. I want to identify this Google link. How to identify this Google link? Right click, inspect. Yeah, tell me. Yeah. Open brace. Why can't I go with class? Can't I go with class? I can go with href also. Yes, I can go with that also, but it is good. Class looks quite small, right? Let me go with class. No, it's it's unique only. I can go with this. Okay, listen carefully, guys. Listen carefully here. Don't take down. I'll give you time to take down. If any element has class attributes, then we can. use the syntax HTML tag open brace HTML tag open brace sorry then we can use this in HTML tag dot class value then what will be the CSS selector in this case If any element has class attribute, then what is the CS selector for this? A dot my class. I can use either that or else I can use this. Only if that element has class attribute, I can use that. Or else I cannot. Understood? Yes. Take down this into your notes. If any element has class attribute, then we can use the syntax. Just to. Only if that element has uh, the class attribute, you can use this dot, not for ID attribute or some other attribute. Okay. Now, 
I want to identify this female radio button. How to identify the female radio button? Right click, inspect. Yeah. Tell me. Input. Open race ID equal to female. Okay. ID equal to female. ID equal to female. Then, if any element has ID attribute, then we can use the syntax HTML tag hash ID value. That's it. Take down this. Uh, now, sorry. What is the CS selector in this case? Female. That's it. Only if that element has ID attribute, I can use this. Only if the element has ID attribute, I can use this. Understood? Take down this into your notes. See, this CSS selectors can be identified only by using attribute. If you have ID attribute, then you can use hash. If you have class attribute, then you can use dot. This is the only two elements what we find. These are the only two element, uh, two uh, shortcuts what we have. Okay. Now, if I want to identify all the checkboxes, what is the CSS selector to identify all the checkboxes? What is the CSS selector to identify all the checkboxes? This is the CSS selector to identify all the checkboxes. Here in this case I have only one checkbox. Sorry. Here I have all checkboxes. I can identify multiple elements by using CSS selector also. How will you identify all the text boxes? Input type equal to text so that it will identify all the text boxes. Yes. How will you identify all the radio buttons in this page? Input type equal to radio. That's it. Input type equal to radio. Now, if I want to identify all the links in the page, then what I can do here? Yeah? Yeah? If I use A, then it will show 34 matching notes. All links cannot be identified. All images also can't be identified. See, for example, if I give IMG, it shows 65 matching notes. All the tags which has IMG, IMG, it will take. CS selector will take. That's why these cannot be identified. Only the first three can be identified. Check boxes, text boxes, and radio buttons. Take down this.
is to identify all the radio buttons okay now we have learned how that's all about css there is nothing much to learn in css also only by using attribute we can identify for class and uh, uh, class and id we have shortcuts okay we are going to use say so we have came to know how to identify the first five element locators now id name link text text path css selector class name tag name and partial link text directly while we are going to perform action we will learn that is simple like id and name only that anyhow we will see further that we will never use that in real time also okay that is all about element locators now we are perfect enough with element locators then if you want to per uh, perform actions then we should know the basics of java from tomorrow onwards so yeah, i am going to start with basics of java concepts even though if you don't know the basic program how to write how to install from very scratch onwards i am going to teach you where to download how to install how to write the small programs slowly we will increase one by one that